response to much of the violence that we've seen over the beginning of, beginning of the summer, uh, we've decided to come together and call together those individuals who are mostly impacted by that violence and also are caught up in the contributions of that violence and call for not just peace, but also the progress necessary to sustain that peace. So we designed and outlined a peace and progress summit ending in a peace and progress treaty. Again, we understand that we've had a number of peace summits, we've called for a number of peace summits, but we understand that it's, there's progress that's needed, infrastructural change that's needed in these communities to maintain that type of progress, to keep those individuals from going back and running back to that violence. So we've outlined a number of other individuals, organizations, and groups, a means in which the various street tribal members, organizations, and groups can come together and discuss those things needed to mediate and reconcile their differences to come together with tribunal councils and uh, consider ways for peace, consider ways to implement and maintain that peace. And of course, as we said before, uh, the type of progress needed to sustain that peace. We know that in these communities, there's often a lack of economic opportunity, economic development, a housing opportunity, housing development. And these things contribute directly to the pressures that turn communities on each other, the, the, the desperation, the survival needed to uh, that, that's often experienced, uh, it, it turns these people on each other, these brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters, on each other. And so again, we're calling for those same brothers and sisters and interested parties to join us as we ask for solutions, as we bring solutions to the table and outline a, uh, a treaty for peace and progress. And so again, we're asking for all interested parties. We've spoken to members of the Small Business Administration, the South Shore Chamber of Commerce, the South Shore Small Business uh, Development Centers, just last week when they uh, opened and announced about some of those uh, means for progress. We spoke with State Senator Peters. We also spoke with the Alderman of this particular uh, district. And we got uh, firm support from all of them, vocal support from all of them. We're looking for them to come along with the rest of the legislative body. Uh, some of our automatic black council, the legislative black council. We're looking for your support, for you to come into the community that you represent and design means and implement means for true progress so that there can be actual peace. We need assistance, we need entrepreneurial, interested in peace to come together and assist us in maintaining that peace with progress. So this Peace and Progress Summit begins tomorrow right here at the ABJ Community Center. It will be bounced around the city on all sides of the city, on the north side, on the west side, uh, in Roseland and uh, West State Street as well, and here on the east side. And we'll be calling again, again, in, again, all parts of the city. You can register for the summit uh, typing in Chicago Street Tribes Peace and Progress Summit. The summits begin at 2 o'clock, at 2 o'clock. Again, we're meeting right here tomorrow for the first day of the summit. We will announce the, uh, the uh, outline of the summit and give those participants those things necessary to come and contribute to the draft of the treaty. Throughout the week, we'll be working on those things and uh, affirming those things that need to be in the treaty, only with uh, input from all interested parties. So again, this isn't something that's being forced on the streets. This is something we're asking the streets to come together to, to inform all interested parties as to what's needed so that we can have the results that we all look for, peace and progress in our communities. Yeah. And we appreciate your assistance in getting that word out and encouraging all brothers and sisters that you may know who are engaged in street uh, tribal violence or maybe victims of street tribal violence. We need to find out the root causes in every community because every community is different. We need to find out the progress that's needed in every community because every community is different. And so again, we're asking for the support of the entire city of Chicago. We're asking for the support of the entire country because our brothers and sisters, of course, are everywhere. We spread out around the country. What happens here happens everywhere. So let's begin here with the progress of establishing peace and progress amongst our younger brothers and sisters. We thank you for your attention. Peace. to your feet. Stand up. And I want you to say this. Peace now. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to continue to just spread peace in our own community. We're going to bring up another
of the OMIB, who also is a member of the ABJ Millennial Tribe, and he's gonna come in his own way with a spoken word, and then we're gonna hear from another big mama in the community, our data, our data. I'm not talking, I'm talking about show love data specialist, Cecile, Sister Cecile uh, Johnson of the African uh, Development Plan. She'll be coming right behind Tony Mano, who will come and give us a, a piece we like to do as Minister Raheem called edutainment. So come on, Mano, give us something. It chisels deep as these riddles speak from words beyond this widow's peak. These verbs emerge from scribble sheets, giving to the needy over the it'll keep. Sizzle heat as silver seeps through those holes where missiles reach from trigger fingers that don't give a bleep, but arouse the barrel of a tickled piece. With these two fingers that signal peace, Helping the lead locked in chamber to wiggle free, turning lion tigers and bears to triple beasts, breaking smiles and jaws as they quiver teeth, figuratively and literally, violating the flesh like jiggle cheeks. And I'm just hoping for a little peace. But it's crazy to say that for some reason the Midwest be feeling like the Middle East. So I imagine. I'm ready to say envision. So we imagine. I imagine seeing my son lift up his brothers. My daughter getting the ring before being that baby's mother. Finding the husband before finding a lover. Jumping over a broom before hopping under a cover. Streets less hot. Sorry, we're trying to. <laughs> Streets less hot. School more cool. Rappers are educators instead of some paid fools. Every day watching the tube and not seeing bad news. Little girls less jazzy, less mothers singing the blues. Cuz not getting popped. My blood stopped getting shot. Folks put down their peace before bringing peace to the block. Less little kids getting hit with them stray bullets. More thoughts about them consequences before they pull it. A lot of less poor pits. Judges thinking about them sentences before they rule it. Parents know their kids ain't stupid. They probably just foolish. So you take them out of their box when they be twisted like a Rubik's. More fathers at home. Less men up in them cubics, treating immigrants like humans instead of some mutants. No matter what race we all getting along, stop killing each other over colors we got on. Encouraging healthy living so we'll all live long. Stop hurting our planet, taking care of our home. Stop being cruel, help the people that's needy. Give a man food instead of just being greedy. Officers, I say officers, serving us and protecting us like they promised. Politics, not corrupt, and our leaders being honest. Stop raising the taxes just to make the rich richer. Everybody come together, be part of the bigger picture. Imagine where we would go. Imagine where we could be. If we open up our eyes, especially our third eye, imagine what we would see. Then I picked up the mode to turn on the TV, click, to see it's just my imagination. Running away with me. Peace. Peace. Come on and give it up for our young men. Yes. Our young men on fire. Yes. Yes. And now we have our other big mama in the village, Sister Cecile Johnson. Come on and just give a nice ashe and a round of applause for her. So my name is Cecile and I uh, recently did some testimony with the city's human services uh, committee as we dealt with the issue of the reparations commission. A commission that was circumvented and became just a reparations committee with a, a one year report or annual report. Um, as you can see from the violence that's happening here in the city, we need more than that, right? We need more than a report because some of the issues that have happened here to us have been historic. Um, are, are based on systemic racism. We've had many studies that show this. And so what we have done is capture the data. And still it looked like it fell on deaf ears because when we look, the mayor circumvented us having a commission which would have been funded so we could begin to really deal with the root causes of this issue. Our young people in the street need more than words. They need, they need economics, they need housing, they need health, right? 
All black infants in Chicago are three times more likely to die in the first year of life than the whites, right? Our black women giving birth are six times more likely to die giving birth. When you look at places like Inglewood and other communities, we have a 30 year life difference between black and white. These are things that any normal person would ask, wow, what's going on? Instead, report after report about the things that are happening in our community just come out, you hear a little blip, and then it's gone, right? We, the black community, showing you here today, our men in black, our youth, our programs that Pastor Victoria has, the programs that we're doing is that we must be part of the solution to our own problems, right? We're not looking for nobody to save us. Right now, we're in a crisis. We got these children who are having serious problems, right? Some of it is drug-induced. Some of it is just the desperation from having had your whole families torn up over the last couple of decades. And we want you to begin to see us as we are, as human beings. So all the people who have come before me have asked that if we could just come together, say, wake up everybody, time to build a new land, right? That's what we got to do. So we're asking all the churches that are out there, all the community groups that are out there doing good, we need you to be begin to... Um, be funded. We need funding for our community groups, right? We need funding for our community groups. When you see what's happening, part of it is the disinvestment that we've had in our communities. WBEZ did a report recently talking about how the bank spent 12 cents of the dollar in the black community and the rest of the dollar in four communities up on the north side. Come on, man. That's not right, right? That's so right. we right. want the community and the people to understand that what's happening to us is, is historic, systemic racism. And the only way you're going to solve this is that you have to have a commission, a reparations commission, and you have to have focus from the city on the things that the city has done to create the problems that we have. We are undergoverned communities, right? And every response is $8 billion to the police. I love the police, but $1.8 billion of our budget should not be going to the police when little community organizations all across the city could use some of that funding to actually save the children and so the police don't have to get involved. So keep following us, watch what's going on. We'll be sharing more data, breaking this story down. When we look at education, not doing very well here in Chicago, on every single front, high unemployment amongst us. When you look at marriage, it's a problem because a lot of our young men have been incarcerated in a prime time of their lives, a time when they should be building families, starting businesses, being leaders in our community, they're snatched up, okay? So we need you, community, wake up, get involved with us. We, the people, are gonna save ourselves. But we need our elected officials to understand that we need their support also, because after all, they are public servants. Thank you. see that we're not just throwing things together and we don't believe that a walk is going to solve the problem. But what we are saying is that we're taking control of our own community. We're taking the lead in our own community. The healing that we need in our community will come from our community with the resources that are long overdue us so that we can do what we need to do in our community. So thank you, Sister Cecile, for breaking that down. That's very real. One thing about data, when it's, when it's evidence-based and it's, and it's vetted, as they say, we can't run from the data. And the data shows that the black community needs some attention. But we're also saying that we can control our own community. So thank you again, Sister Cecile. We're going to be, I want to make sure everyone understands and know that the OMIB will be patrolling the community every single weekend, and they may decide to do more. But the patrolling will begin tonight. We're doing a symbolic unity walk, so we're asking you to stick around for another 15 minutes. We're winding down. We're winding down real quickly. We're going to put the equipment away, and then we're going to take a walk through our own community so that the residents know that the OMIB will be on hand people as they going back and forth to the currency exchange, to the grocery store, taking care of their business, making sure that our babies get back and forth safe, very similar to some of these other well-funded
programs that are going on where we're boots on the ground, grassroots, and we're doing the same thing from a neighborly and loving approach. You all remember back in the day when we had Officer Friendly? And, 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 and we, were, we were so young and, and small, but we, I know I used to look forward to Officer Friendly. So they're not sworn police officers. They're not police officers in any shape or form. But I'm speaking of the friendliness, the hospitality, the neighborly love. So we're going to end this evening with a walk through our village. So stick around for that. But we have a couple more speakers and we're done. But I want to bring up another young man that actually started at ABJ when he was 17 years old. And when we met this young man, he had, Sister Cecile, he had one credit in high school. And he was a junior. Or were you a sophomore? I think you were a junior at Bird. Sophomore, he was a sophomore with one credit. This young man fought back. He fought back, he went to his classes, he did everything he needed to do. He stayed involved in the community. You heard him kick the program off. He's now a father. He's a family man. He's a mentor. He's an inspiration. And I want you to help me welcome another ABJ Millennial Tribe member, OMIB member, Adverb. He's going to come to you in his own way. Give it up for Adverb! I'm getting ready to literally be on the street corners where they say they are violent. There is no solution in our neighborhood every weekend. Y'all gotta give me a little bit more energy than that. Woo! <laughs> a little bit more energy. It's not something we're doing because we're getting paid to do it, but we believe that we can actually build peace. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, this is a little bit off, off topic, but there's a lot of young men in our neighborhood that don't believe that there can be peace between streets. So how can we have peace in our whole community if we don't even have to think of the idea that that can actually be, you can actually be at peace with somebody who lives across the street from you, no matter what side of the street you're at. And that's what we're facing, that's what the OMIB would definitely be addressing, to have our people, for one, be at peace with each other. That's the first step, to create peace with each other. Because if we ain't at peace with each other and we got everybody else fighting us, we five fingers that separate. So I want y'all to think about this little story that I'm going to uh, present to you. I'm gonna I'm I'm present to you the, uh, the, 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 uh, the story half full or half empty, or is it something else? Once upon a time, a professor walked around on a stage while teaching stress management principles to an auditorium filled with students. As she raised a glass of water, everyone expected that she would ask the typical question, half empty, or half full. Instead, with a smile on her face, the professor asks, how heavy is this glass of water I'm holding? Yeah. Students shouted out answers ranging from eight ounces to a couple of pounds. She replied, from my perspective, the absolute weight of this glass doesn't matter. It all depends on how long I hold it. I'll say that for all of you. What this story is saying. It, it all depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute, it's fairly light. If I hold it for an hour straight, it weight may make my arm ache a little. If I hold it for a day straight, my arm will more than likely cramp up and completely go numb, forcing me to drop the bottle of water. In each case, the weight of the glass doesn't change, but the longer I hold on to it, the heavier it feels to me. As the class shook their head in agreement, she continued, your stress and worries in life are very much like this glass of water. Think about them for a while and nothing happens. Think about them a little bit longer and you become you begin to ache a little bit more. Think about your problems and stress and your worries all day and you will completely feel numb and paralyzed, incapable of doing anything until you drop them. Moral of the story. 
it is important to remember to let go of your stresses and worries. No matter what you're doing during the day, as early as the evening, as early in the evening as you can, put your burdens down. <laughs> them throughout the night and into the next day. If you feel the weight of yesterday's stress, it is a strong sign that it is time to put the glass. It's time to put the glass down. Hey. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. This young man loves small children, so I can I can feel him make me think about the black version of Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Gonna give you a, 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 a black sweater and put you on camera. <laughs> Come on, y'all, make some noise. Y'all all right out there? Yes. All right, we have one or two more speakers, and we're gonna be done. But again, we just want to say that we are reclaiming love in our own village. We are a loving people. We are committed. We are hardworking. We are people that are deeply, deeply passionate. That's right, that's right. We are deeply passionate people and we know who we are and we act accordingly. So we want the South Shore community as well as other communities around the city to know that we are reclaiming our own position for ourselves. We have another powerhouse speaker here. She's a pastor in her own right. She's a member of the Daughters of Sarah. We're going to ask Dr. Gail Frazier to come on up here and give us our charge. What is our charge, Dr. Gail? Make some noise for the sister. Yes. The big mama in the house.
because hope make it not to be ashamed. Mm. Don't give up the struggle because we've always been overcomers. We will continue to fight the good fight of faith. We will continue, as it was said earlier, that to pursue, overtake, and recover all. We're not operating in fear because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Right. So we are calling on the work that we're doing collectively. There's no one person can do it. Right. The police superintendent can't do it. Right. But when we come together as one, I remember it saying in the Bible that when the people become as one, nothing is impossible. Right. So we need to understand that we have the authority to tread on the serpents, the scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And my Bible says nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we have to take the stand in the spirit as well as in the natural and do the work that God has ordained us to do because we're not running. We're not running. We're standing steadfast and movable and always abounding. So I want you all to be at peace. I want our brothers and sisters to know that we love you. We don't care where you are, what you've done. We love you because love is stronger than death. So we want to encourage everyone today, everybody to be at peace. We're going to show some love today because that's what God ordained for us to do. So you all stay encouraged. I love you. Stay encouraged. Let's move this thing forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I feel some heat up here now. I feel the fire. I feel the fire. I feel like we need to do something together. What you got out there? Come on. Come on. Come on. Give me something to work with. I got a song. Come on with it. What you got? What you got? You want me to go up there or from here? There. Okay. So it's really simple. This is what I do when I hear shots. Okay. From my window, right? Keep the peace. Ready? I don't think okay. we know it. I don't know. I, I, it's, peace it's, peace it's, in the streets. Peace in the street. Love. Peace in the streets. Mm -hmm. Love to my, to my peace. peace. Okay. Violence decrease. You know it. Guns fire. <laughs> 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 but I, but I, I, I'm sorry. I need some, I need some a little Boom. more fire. Boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I, we, I, we I got need some a little more fire. Y'all got to come up with something. We got to get out of here. We got to do our unity ball. <laughs> We, we, yeah, we're going to do the unity walk that's following the press conference. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for invoking the spirit of peace. Yes. We really do need peace, and we will have peace. So, again, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Yes, my sister. What a testimony. All right, we got our song, and then we're going to go out with Arambe. And Arambe just simply means pulling it together, pulling ourselves together. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand where you are. We're going to do the, nas the Black National Anthem yeah. as we prepare now to go into the streets and go to uh, gather up our brothers and sisters. And we hope that the OMIB will...
grow in leaps and bounds and that the young men in the community, the little boys and the little girls will know that yes, there is mercy and yet there is hope. I'm asking everyone to please stand for the Na Black National Anthem and then we're gonna do a little bit of a chant as we put the equipment away. And those of you who will, please join us on the Unity Walk. I'm again, I'm Pastor Victoria C. Brady, President and CEO of Eddie B. Jones Community Services, also known as ABJ. We work with our young people. We train in leadership. We help build the next generation of leaders to become change agents in their own community. So with that being said, let us sing together. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Come on, put the fist up. Again, we'll start here, right on the corner. We'll go to Jeffrey. We'll hang out in the mall for a minute. Then we'll walk to 70th and Jeffrey, cross the street, come back down Jeffrey, and come back to ABJ. All right. So we should be we should be lining up in about 10 minutes. All right. Thank you. 